Greetings and welcome to the introduction to astronomy. In this week's Women in Astronomy, we are going to talk about Antonia Mori and look at her contributions to astronomy. So let's get started. And we know that Antonia Mori was born in 1866 in, in New York and lived until 1952. Her father was an amateur naturalist, so we see a science background in the family here. But she is also known as the niece of Henry Draper. Now, when you often look at stars, you may see stars given as an HD number, which is the Henry Draper catalog. So she definitely had a strong exposure to science starting at a very young age and hopefully had encouragement, therefore, to get more involved with science. Now, she uh, actually attended Vassar College and studied under Maria Mitchell, another astronomer we talked about previously in this series. So she had a background and training in astronomy, something we did see that didn't work as much with some of the other uh, astronomers that we've talked about. Now, she also became one of the members of the Harvard computers that we've talked about in previous uh, discussions here. And that was the group of women hired by Edward Pickering to do a lot of the classifications and the calculation work that was needed. And Antonia became the first person to calculate the orbit of a spectroscopic binary star. Now, binary stars can come in different types. We can have a visual binary where we can see the two stars together through the telescope, making it easier to map, map out their orbits. In a spectroscopic binary, we can only see evidence of the stars through the spectra that we look at and those spectral lines and how they change as the stars orbit around each other. So it's another challenge in calculating those. And Antonia was the first person to be able to do that to calculate the orbit of a spectroscopic binary. She also, like many of the, the Harvard computer astronomers that we looked at, observed stellar spectra. And she expanded upon the classification system that was given to us by Wilhelmina Fleming and then uh, adjusted and adapted by Annie Cannon that we looked at previously. Hers was a more detailed classification system. How was it more detailed? Well, she was able to differentiate between giant and dwarf stars. Now that was a difference than the previous system. When we looked at the previous classification under Annie Cannon, that was simply the OBAFGKM that we see down here. Now, what but that's not the entire classification that's what we would call a one dimensional classification in this case it's just looking at temperatures however there is more to it because depending on where things fall on this sequence you could have a star with a certain classification but it might fall on this region which would make it a dwarf star here where it would be a giant star or here, where it would be a super giant star. And the spectra, while they would look essentially the same, were actually referring to very different stars. So this was very important and became a key part of what was needed by Hertzsprung and Russell as they developed their HR diagram for stars. And that's really what we're looking at here is an HR diagram. But what Antonia did was to split this and be able to tell stars not just classify them one dimensionally by their temperatures, but classify them two dimensionally by their temperature and by their luminosity class. And that allowed for a more detailed and better understanding of stars. And by 1922, this her modifications were incorporated into the official classification system. And Antonia Mori did die in 1952 at the age of 85. So let's go ahead and finish up with our summary and look about a little bit about what we talked about today. We said that Antonia Mori was born in New York in 1866. She expanded the classification system and it was not immediately accepted. However, eventually was incorporated into the official classification system in 1922. So that concludes this discussion of Antonia Mori.
We'll be back again next time to discuss another woman in astronomy. So until then, have a great day, everyone, and I will see you in class.